Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I'm a nursing student. So if you have not seen my previous videos, I attend Chamberlain University. I attend their evening and weekend BSN program. It's a three-year accelerated program and they have campuses all throughout the nation. I attend the campus in Virginia. And this session I am taking Fundamentals of Patient Care, and I'm taking Pharmacology. Now, Fundamentals of Patient Care is actually the first class where we actually go to the hospital and we do clinicals and get to work with patients. So I'm really excited to share this part of my journey with you guys. And I actually just came from the hospital. So I wanted to make a quick video just kind of giving you a run through of my day, just to explain what it's like to attend clinicals with Chamberlain University. Now this is not a day in the life of video. If you want a vlog style video or if you're interested in vlog style videos in general, please just comment down below and let me know and I can work on that. Of course there's a lot that I can't show like being in the actual hospital for HIPAA reasons, but I can kind of take you guys through how I prep the night before, what I do the morning of clinicals, and then how I come home and decompress. So this is just going to be a short video just talking you through how clinicals are at Chamberlain. Before I get too far into the actual content of the video, I want to take a moment to thank Fitville. Fitville sent me a pair of shoes that are amazing for clinical and are amazing for nurses, especially if you're already out in the field and if you're at the bedside. So these shoes are absolutely amazing. They're lightweight, they're flexible, they provide great support. I have worn these to the hospital for over eight hours and my feet feel totally comfortable and they feel just as comfortable throughout the day as they do when I first put them on. What I really love about Fitville is that not only do they of course have shoes in different sizes, but they also have different colors, different styles, and they make shoes for men as well. I love my pair of shoes. I just got done wearing them for eight hours and my feet feel amazing. So like I said, just go ahead and check out the link in the description box below to check out Fitville's shoes. Okay, so I can't speak for all campuses with Chamberlain University because it is a nationally accredited school and there are multiple campuses throughout the country, but at least for my campus, which is in Virginia in Tyson's Corner, clinicals are set up one of two ways. So you can have 12-hour clinicals and you're going to the hospital every other week, or you have eight-hour clinicals and you're going to the hospital every week. So if you've seen my previous videos, then you may be familiar with the layout of Chamberlain. We do not do typical 16 week semesters. Instead, semesters are kind of split in half into eight week sessions. So each course at Chamberlain is eight weeks, meaning that each clinical rotation is also eight weeks. And within each eight week clinical rotation, each student is only required to have 48 hours of clinicals. So there are two structures for clinicals at Chamberlain University. One structure is that you are going to the hospital for your clinical hours every other week for 12 hours. The other structure is that you're going to the hospital every single week for eight hours. Now each student is required to have 48 clinical hours for each rotation. So if you're going to the hospital every week for eight hours, of course you only have to go to the hospital six times a session. And that is the rotation that I am in. I go every week on Saturdays for eight hours. And then two Saturdays during the eight week session, we have a break. So during those two Saturdays, you either get alternative assignments or you do not have any assignments from your professor. And if you are doing the other schedule where you have to do 12 hour days, you will kind of be in teams. So half of your cohort will be going one weekend and then the other half will be going the following weekend and then you switch off, kind of like A and B teams. But at the end of it, whether you're doing 12 hours every other week or eight hours every week, by the end of the eight week clinical rotation, you would have 48 hours in the hospital. Now, of course, I'm not going to name which hospital I go to for clinicals, but I will say that every rotation, you may have a different placement. It all just depends on placements, clinical spots, and where you're able to get into. So some of my cohort is at the same hospital that I'm at. Some of my cohort is at another hospital. Some of my cohort is in a nursing home. It just all depends on what is available each session and each session it completely changes. So I attend clinicals every Saturday for eight hours, 
But of course, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know that I attend the evening and weekend program at Chamberlain. And so that is why I'm able to attend Saturday clinicals. Typically, if you're gonna be doing the daytime program or if you're currently in the daytime program, you will be going to the hospital during the day, Monday through Friday, either from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m or from like 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And that is my schedule. So of course for clinical, you are required to have your uniform and they are strict about your uniform. You're required to wear your Chamberlain scrub top, which is what I'm wearing now, your Chamberlain bottoms, white shoes, no nail polish, you have to wear natural makeup, you have to have your hair up either in a bun or a ponytail, but it needs to be away from your face and away from your shoulders and your neck. You are also not allowed to have jewelry aside from a wedding band. I wear my wedding band, but I leave my engagement ring at home. And you are permitted to have earrings, but they have to only be one pair of earrings and they cannot be dangling. So I don't know if you guys can see, but typically I wear studs, but I also have these tiny gold hoop earrings that I wear to clinical and that's perfectly fine. And then you're not supposed to have an Apple watch for clinical. So I actually got this watch on Amazon. I can send the link below. This watch is amazing, it's very rubbery, so it can get bodily fluids, it can get dirt on it, and I'm able to scrub it clean, and it doesn't break. And it cost me less than 20 bucks, I believe. Like I said, I'll go ahead and link it in the description box below if you wanna check out this watch. And then if you have tattoos, you have to have them covered up for clinicals. So I don't have any sleeves. I do have a couple of tattoos throughout my body, but they are hidden with my uniform. I have two tattoos that are exposed on my wrist. I don't know if you can see it on camera. One is completely covered by my watch, and then the other one you can kind of see, so that's okay. But if you have sleeves, you would be required to wear an undershirt. I believe it has to be either white or cobalt blue just to make sure that it adheres to the uniform. And then in addition to your uniform, you also have to bring your stethoscope. I had a whole fiasco week one where I forgot my stethoscope and my mom had to bring it from home and it was a mess. But you do use your stethoscope for clinicals and depending on which professor you have, you could get sent home if you are missing an element of your uniform. So for the stethoscope specifically, the hospitals do have disposable stethoscopes in their supply closets. But if you get a really strict professor, they could say that that is a part of your uniform that's missing and you could get sent home. And they advise us not to bring too many items to clinical because there really isn't anywhere to put them. So at the hospital that I go to, they do have a staff lounge that's closed off to visitors and patients. So only staff is going there and they do have lockers but all of my cohort we just put our stuff on a shelf or in a cubby or on the floor we don't use up the lockers just to make sure that that's saved for staff I personally would advise you not to bring anything too valuable to clinicals so there's really not anywhere secure that you can put your things I personally would not bring like a large duffel bag I do bring my book bag so I don't bring like my book bag and a purse I empty out the contents of my purse and I put it in my book bag. I use an iPad to take notes and I have my Apple Pencil and I have all of my accessories. Honestly, when I'm going to clinical, I leave all of that at home. And it's not to say that I don't trust the hospital staff, but you're really not gonna need it when you're on the unit. You're gonna be running around, so it's probably best to just leave it at home unless you absolutely need it. And in my book bag, I really don't have much. I bring my lunch because we do get a lunch break. Our lunch break is like 30 minutes. And then I also have this tiny notepad. So this can fit in the pocket of the Chamberlain uniforms. So I have this notepad, I have a pen, just in case I have to jot down anything, which typically you'll be jotting down vital signs, any new skills that you learn, you'll just like wanna take notes. The order of items that the nurses are doing, you just might wanna take notes if you find a nurse and you like her process but you really won't need much more than just a tiny notepad and a pencil. And then depending on your professor, you may wanna bring your clinical documentation. So I also bring a binder. I usually leave that in my book bag and I usually don't take it out for clinical, but I have it just in case I have downtime or at lunchtime if I wanna start filling out my clinical documentation, I have the option to do that. But on the unit, all that I really need is myself, my stethoscope, my little notepad and my pen or pencil. <clears throat> 
So clinicals start at 7 a.m. sharp, which means that I have to get there at least 15 minutes early. That is good practice. And I usually get there about half an hour early. My clinical site is about an hour away from my house. So I get there, I park, and we all meet in the lobby just because we can't just go up to the unit. So my whole cohort meets in the lobby at 7 a.m. And by 7 a.m., we've already walked up to the unit together. We put our stuff down and we're there in time to see the night shift giving report to the day shift. So when we get on the unit, we're able to observe shift change. That's typically when we get to shadow a nurse. Now, I don't know about every campus, but at least with my campus, they made a point that they don't necessarily always assign you with nurses. It just kind of depends on your clinical site, who's friendly, who's not friendly. Unfortunately, you will meet nurses who don't really want us there just because they're busy, they're overloaded, and they don't also want to have to teach somebody and have somebody following them around. Luckily, the hospital that I'm at, the nursing staff so far has been amazing. They've been great at teaching, they don't mind us there, so I've been able to shadow a nurse with a partner, of course. Me and my partner have been shadowing a nurse every time that we go. So we follow whichever nurse that we get for the day, we listen to her getting report from the evening nurse, and so it'll just be vital signs, the assessment of the patient, the history of the patient, both socially and physically, any family issues that are going on, any family dynamics, just anything that the day shift nurse should be made aware of. And then the day nurse will go with the evening nurse to the patient together, and the evening nurse will kind of trade off. So the evening nurse will typically let the patient know, hey, I'm leaving, this is the nurse that's gonna be taking over. And each patient room has a whiteboard, of course, that has information about who their nurse is, when they're gonna be getting their medications, all of that. And so the day shift nurse will update the board, introduce themselves to the patient, and introduce us as the students. And we do that for every patient. I am actually on the med surge unit of the hospital that I'm at, so the nurses, their ratio kind of changes each time I go to the hospital. But on average, it's about five patients. So we go around and we do that for each patient. We're also present for the unit's staff huddle. So during shift change or towards the end of shift change, we'll do a huddle just to brief everybody, just like a quick five minute meeting. And then after the meeting, the evening shift will go home and the day shift will officially start their shift. And then after that, it kind of varies from nurse to nurse, just what their process is. The nurse that I had today went back to each patient's room. She did an assessment on her patients and she took their vital signs while she was doing the assessment. And then she went to go document her findings. And then from there, she saw who needed to get medications in the morning. She prepped her medications and she went to each patient and did that. And so we followed her, we observed her and we were able to ask her questions. And then after that, we did whatever she told us to do. So each day is different. Of course, I'm on a med surge unit, which is typically very busy, but I do go there on the weekends, so it's a little bit calmer than during the weekdays, but it is during the day, so it's very busy. You have patients moving around, patients in pain, you have family members coming to visit. There's a lot going on. Okay, sorry, my camera died. So to summarize, we meet up in the morning before 7 a.m. By 7 a.m., we put our stuff away, we go to the unit, we're kind of paired up with each other, and then two people each are paired up with a nurse on the unit. We get to listen and kind of be a part of giving report or taking report from the evening shift. We go and we meet each patient, we introduce ourselves to each patient, we look at each patient's chart and just see what's going on with them in the electronic medical records or the EMR software. Epix is a pretty popular one and Epic is the one that's used at the hospital that I am doing clinicals at. And then we go back and we take vitals and we do the assessment and we see if the patients need anything. And then from there, the rest of the day is different every day. It's literally whatever is needed from us on the unit. So if we are shadowing the nurse, if the nurse is administering medications, we're watching, we're asking questions, if the nurse is transferring patients or transporting patients, like if the techs are transporting patients, we will assist with that. We can pretty much do anything except for administer medications. And everything that we do for the most part is supervised either by our professor or by the nurses on the unit. And I've gotten to do some really cool things. I've helped with removing an indwelling catheter. I've gotten to do a real assessment on patients, which is very different than in the classroom with 
people that you know or with the mannequins or with your family members and friends. It's totally different doing it with a real patient who is in pain and who has a lot of questions. I've gotten to auscultate bowel sounds. For me, I had actually never taken vitals on a real patient before. So like I said, I attend eight hour clinicals this session. So about halfway through the day, my professor takes my cohort down to eat in the cafeteria and we're able to just kind of relax for a little bit before going back up on the unit. And we go back up on the unit, we're kind of paired with our nurse again. And again, it's the same thing that we were doing in the morning. If we are stopped by a tech or a nurse who asks us to take vital signs or asks us to check on a patient, assist them to the bathroom, we'll do that. If we're going into patients' rooms or answering call bell lights, they may need water, they may just need anything, literally anything except for medications. If we notice abnormal vitals or any type of abnormalities, we'll notify the nurse immediately. And that's pretty much just a run through of clinicals so far. I'm really excited to start going to different units. I really like MedSurge actually, I know that it gets a bad rep, but I'm most familiar with MedSurge in my personal life, and now this is my first clinical rotation, I really like it, so I'm excited to see what each rotation and each specialty is like. And then of course, I think I briefly mentioned it, but of course with clinical rotations you have to do schoolwork, like actual written work. So we do have a fair amount of written documentation that we have to do. When we do the health assessment on the patient, we have written documentation that we have to do. When we do kind of like a 30 second assessment of the room when we first enter, just observing the patient, if they're using any assistive devices, if they're on oxygen, we have documentation that we have to do. At the end of each clinical day, we do a debriefing. So we all meet up the same way that we met up before clinical, we meet up after clinical and we do kind of a debriefing and a reflection with our professor about what we learned and what our takeaways are from the day and then we have to document that and we have to submit that documentation every week. And that is a very condensed, very summarized overview of how clinicals are and what is typically done in a day. And again, this is at least for the med surge unit. So I'm in a hospital, I'm on the med surge unit, I'm not doing a specialty right now. And this is my first clinical rotation. So I'm learning a lot, it's definitely the basics, which is why of course it's fundamentals of patient care. If you have any questions or like I said, if you want me to shoot more of a vlog style video, please comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Again, check out the link in my description for Fitville Shoes, and I'll see you guys in the next video.